And this morning, the message is, is your builder a master builder? And I'm starting by reading from Luke 6, and I'm reading verse 46 to verse 49. Build on the rock. And why call you me Lord, Lord, and do not the things which I say? Whosoever cometh to me and heareth my sayings and doth them, I will shew you to whom he is like. He is like a man which built an house and digged deep and laid the foundation on a rock. And when the flood arose, the stream beat vehemently upon that house and could not shake it, for it was founded upon a rock. But he that heareth and doth not is like a man that without a foundation built an house upon the earth, against which the stream did beat vehemently, and immediately it fell, and the ruin of that house was great. That's our first scripture for this morning, family. And we're going to look at the differences of these boulders this morning. You know, every time when we drive to church, now I know some of you walk from that way, and some drive from this way. But every time I, we come to church, there's a board right on the corner, if you come from that way, that says, Vision Build. Who is your, master, is your builder a master builder? And you know, family, I've seen it many times. But last Sunday, it was just, wow. Is your builder a master builder? You know, building foundations, family, is the crucial starting point. Now, I'm not a builder myself, but I know that a proper foundation, if there's a proper foundation, a house is held above ground. It keeps out moisture. That's what the foundation does. It in insulates against the cold. It resists the movement of the earth around it. Now, I think it was about 2014, there was a very big quake. Who of you remember that quake here in, in Clarksdorf? remember it it was huge and you know the house we lived in at that stage was a double story and the children told me that they looked back and they could see the house move but there was one small wind crack why because the foundation was good that house had a firm foundation you know now the word this morning that I read to you says that um, everyone who hears Jesus' words, everyone who hears Jesus' words and builds upon them is like a wise man who builds his house on the rock. The wise builder's house in this parable was built on a solid foundation. A solid foundation but what constitutes a solid perfect rock foundation in our lives family verse 47 says everyone who comes to me and hears my words and acts on them I will show you whom he is like he is like a man building a house who dug deep family you have to dig deep and have a foundation on the rock not shifting sand and the word deep means the deep things of God who to mere people in the world who does not hear the word of God and act on it do not understand the spiritual things that belong to God they are the works of God not surface things, family. It's not your own works. We can never 
trust in our own works. We have to dig deep. Now, this man realized that asking God, seeking God, and knocking on God's kingdom door was far more than just scratching the surface. It's far more than what you see and what you do, family. It's far more than that. The foundation is not even yours. I want to tell you this morning. The foundation is not even yours. You are not even the boulder. You're not the boulder. I want to read Ex Exodus 33 verse 17 to 22. And the Lord said to Moses, I will do the very thing you have asked because I am pleased with you and I know you by name. Isn't that beautiful? I know you by name. Then Moses said, now show me your glory. And the Lord said, I will cause all my goodness to pass in front of you and I will proclaim my name, the Lord, in your presence. I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy and I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. But he said, you cannot see my face for no one may see me and live. Then the Lord said, there is a place near me where you may stand on a rock. When my glory passes by, I will put you in a cleft in the rock and cover you with my hand until I have passed by. Moses' family was hidden and protected in the cleft of the rock as well as God's protective hand. God provides a safe and sure foundation if we are in the presence of God. You know, I want you to confess now that beautiful piece in that verse, God know me by my name. Confess it with me, family. God know me by my name. Deuteronomy 32 verse 1 to 4. Give ear, O heavens, and I will speak, and let the earth hear the words of my mouth. May my teaching drop as the rain, my speech distill as the dew, like gentle rain upon the tender grass, and like showers upon the herb. For I will proclaim the name of the Lord. Ascribe greatness to our God, the rock. He is the rock. His work is perfect for all his ways of justice. A God of faithfulness and without iniquity. Just and upright is he. And family, we carry on then. Hannah did a prayer in 1 Samuel 2 verse 2. There is no one holy like the Lord. There is no one besides you. There is no rock like our God. 2 Samuel 22 verse 20, 32 to 33. For who is God besides the Lord? And who is the rock Accept our God. It is God who arms me with strength and makes my way perfect. 2 Samuel 22 verse 47. The Lord lives. Praise be to my rock. Exalted be God, the rock, my Savior. And Psalm 62 verse 5 to 7. My soul Wait in silence for God only. For my hope is from Him. He only is my rock and my salvation. My stronghold. I shall not be shaken. On God my salvation and my glory rests. The rock of my strength, my refuge is in God. Family, 
That's where our strength lies, in the rock Jesus. You know, the wise builder, he heard the God's word and he built his life upon Jesus. That's where we need to build from, the rock Jesus. And we need to trust Jesus alone for salvation and for strength. I want you to confess this morning, family, that I am a wise builder. Say it. I am a wise builder. Confess it over your life. That you hear the word of God and you do it. He is your foundation. In Numbers 20 verse 8, Moses was told to speak to the rock so that God can give living water. In John 4, 11, the woman at the well said to Jesus, Sir, you have nothing to draw with from this deep well. Where then do you get the living water? But the words of Jesus' family are eternal. The word of Jesus is the living water in our lives. And it's grounded in the bedrock of the Lord God Almighty. And what is bedrock, family? It is solid, solid rock. It's solid. You can't separate teachings. You can't separate teachings from the teacher. Family, you cannot do that. You cannot separate fruit from the vine. You cannot do that, family. The Lord Jesus provides for you to eat, to live, salvation, righteousness. Jesus said in John 10, 30, I and the Father are one. So the Lord Jesus is not connected to the rock. He is the rock of our salvation. Your life must be built on the foundation of faith in Jesus. That's how your life should be built. Jesus is your master builder, family. The result of a building on the sure foundation of Jesus is that when the judgment of God comes, your house will not fall. Your house will not fall. All those that are born of the Spirit of God and have the living Spirit, the Holy Spirit inside of you, you all already received forgiveness by Jesus' death on that cross. Every one of you. <laughs> he redeemed us already. Jesus redeemed us. He's our Savior family. All those who are part of his body, and it's each one of you are a part of God's body. You're the body of Christ family. You are part of a building, not built with human hands, but by God. And you can trust God. You can trust God. Your house will not fall, family. Isaiah 28 verse 16. So this is what the sovereign Lord says. See, I lay a stone in Zion, a tested stone, a precious cornerstone for a sure foundation. The one who relies on it will never be stricken with panic, the word says. We are often so stricken with panic. Confess, family, I will never be stricken with panic. Confess it over your life. I will never be stricken by panic. Because who is your foundation? It is Jesus. Jesus is your sure foundation and your master builder. And then, fam family, I want to read from 1 Corinthians 10, verse 4. For they drank from the spiritual rock, that accompanied them. And that rock was Christ. Romans 8.13 
For if you are living according to the flesh, your works, you must die. But if by the Spirit you are putting to death the deeds of the body, you will live. Not maybe, not if, you will live, the word says. John eleven twenty five. I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live even though they die. And whoever lives by believing in me will never die. Do you believe this? Jesus asked. Family, do you believe this? Do you believe this? And then there's the foolish boulder. The foolish builder's foundation was built on sand, the word says. Now, I don't know, many of us have been at the seashore at some stage or other, and the ocean comes and retracts, and you, if you just stand on, on a certain spot, those waves actually take the sand right from under your feet. It always shifts. Sand shifts. You know, a foolish man just pushes a bit of gravel here and, and pushes pebbles aside. And they're not asking God. They're not seeking Him. And then they won't be found by Him. The foundation of your life family cannot be built on a human heart, on human works, or human understanding cannot be built it cannot be built on our own flesh at all because we as a person are inadequate and emotional and things in our lives are forever shifting like sand because that's human our text says everyone who hears these words of mine and does not act on them so it means this builder heard the word of God. He heard what Jesus said. But he didn't change his heart. He just carried on in his own ways, in the fleshy ways. And then when the storms of life come, and family, we have experienced enormous storms now during this time. I mean, people lost jobs. People lost income. It's storms of life. And if your life is not built on the solid rock and foundation of Jesus Christ, you would have caved in. Because then it caves away from under you. But if He is your rock and your foundation, you will not go under. Because His hand of protection is on you. He knows your name only those who realize their own inadequacy to save themselves will trust Jesus to do so we need to realize that we need to mourn over our sins and we need to humbly follow Jesus that's who we need to follow he will fill us with spirituality and He's merciful. You know, God always demonstrates mercy. We will be pure in heart if we seek Him. He's a righteous God. And the Word says, we will be filled with the peace of Christ. We will be filled with the peace of Christ. And verse 28 to 29 in this chapter ends that it says, When Jesus had finished these words, the crowds were amazed. They were struck out of, out of their senses at his teaching. For he was teaching them as one having authority and not as their scribes. I just want to, you to confess again, family. I am a wise builder. I am a wise builder. Jesus is my rock and my foundation. 
you know, family. He is the unchanging word of life. That's who Jesus is. He's the unchanging word of life. And his words are God's eternal words. The scripture teaches us in John 1 verse 1. In the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. And the word was God. It's living. It's a living word, family. It's a living word. And I want to finish this morning by the following. That if you go and read, if you go and read in 1 Corinthians 3 verse 9 to 15, it also tells us what will happen if Jesus is not the rock. Because our works will be tested, family. We are all expected, each one of us as we are sitting here, are expected to be involved in the building project of the kingdom of God. Charles Spurgeon said, ask yourself, have I written in the snow? And now we all know what happens with snow. Have you written in the snow? There will come a day, Paul says in Corinthians, when our works will be shown for what it is, because the day will bring it to light. It will be revealed by fire and it will be tested whether it's gold, silver, whether it's precious stones which will endure the fire or is it made of hay and straw that will go up in smoke. Only one person family changed you. Only Christ gave you new life and can give new life. No other foundation but now that you anchored in Christ, it doesn't mean we can live any which way we want. That's what Corinthians tells us. There is construction going on in our lives continuously. We must build on the foundation, the rock, Jesus Christ. That's what we need to build on. And there are two clear results. We need to understand that, family. That if I am my own boulder, and I build on sand, my house is going to fall. But if we build on Jesus Christ the rock, He that is our master builder, our house will stand. We will weather the storms, even if it doesn't feel like it. So I'm asking you again to go think, who is your builder? Is He a master builder family? Let's pray. Oh, Heavenly Father, I just thank you so much in this morning. I thank you, Jesus Christ, that you are our firm foundation, that you are the rock of ages, that you are the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow, and into everlasting, that we can praise you. You are the Alpha and the Omega. You are the first and the last. And you are our firm foundation. I pray this morning for each one of us to start hearing your word and acting upon it, Lord. Acting on it, Lord. By the help of your Holy Spirit. So that our house will stand, Lord. That our house will stand into eternity. And I just thank you for your mercy and your grace. And we bring you honor and praises and glory. In Jesus' name, amen.